Hi folks, I'm Jason and this is my daily vlog called Living with TMT. I hope you enjoy. Right, we watched part one last night and we've watched parts two and three today. And it's the ABC murders and uh, Achiriku Poirot, Agatha Christie and John Malkovich is playing the part. Um, Rupert Grint's in it as well. He's also playing a policeman, a uh, new head of Scotland Yard and all that. And it's a very, very good three part adaptation actually. Um, there's a good twist, there's lots of twists and turns all the way through it, and it does keep you guessing, it does keep you guessing what's going on, um, it was very well acted, I didn't I didn't know whether John Malkovich would have made a good Hercule Poirot, but uh, he, he did, he surprised me, he did surprise me, because the first time I saw John Malkovich, he was trying to kill a president, and anybody who's seen the Clint Eastwood film will know what I'm talking about, but uh, yeah, He's a really, really good actor, and he did brilliant in that. He really did. Uh, the supporting cast was good as well. There was some really, really good supporting cast in there, including a very, very good cameo from Gregor Fisher, who most people like me will remember him as Rabsi Nesbitt. Um, and you just expect him to start swigging alcohol or look like a tramp. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'd give it a good six, possibly seven. Um it's not everybody's cup of tea because not everybody likes Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot, but it's okay. It's not bad. It's a good sort of murder mystery drama. I will actually tell you that I did figure it out. Um, uh, why the whys and wherefores? I figured that out anyway, and I thought it was very clever how it, how it went along. Mm, you see a side to Hercule Poirot you've not seen before because like, literally this is later on in his life. This is not when he was at his peak. This is later on in his life, this is. This is when he's a bit older and he's not as revered as he was. Um, he's gone down the pecking order slightly. But yeah, like I said, six or seven. Before Christmas, um, me and my wife cashed in a lot of Debenhams vouchers because we got, we did a thing called Shop and Scan and another one called Consumer Pulse and we've lost them all together and we added them up and we thought, right, we've got enough here to get Deborah fragrance, me a fragrance. And a Christmas present for somebody. And we thought, right, we'll get them all together. And we got them all together, and they came. And it was about £290, I think it was in total. Anyway, we got the Christmas present, and we got Deb's fragrance. But the one I wanted, they didn't seem to have. They only had it in gift sets, and it was a ridiculous price. And it's a, a fragrance uh, called Jimmy Choo, uh, sorry, by Jimmy Choo, called Man. Uh, now, they do Man Ice, and they do Man Blue, but we couldn't find Jimmy Choo Man. Anyway, we looked everywhere else and they got it in here, they got it in there, they got it in everywhere except Debenhams. Well, that was the only place you had the vouchers for. So I said to Deb, I said, rather than getting it me from somewhere else, wait till after Christmas. So between Christmas and New Year, we went back into Debenhams and they still hadn't got any in. And we've been in the New Year and they still haven't got any in. So um, we were on the Boots website the other day because Deb was ordering something off Boots anyway. And we just thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. Now, the thing that amazes me is... They had the fragrance, the 50 ml bottle of EDT, Eau de Toilette, you know, Jimmy Choo, man. Now, the 50 ml bottle on its own was £46. The 50 ml bottle in a gift set with free shower gel was £30. So it was kind of strange that the gift set with extra product in it was cheaper than buying the product just on its own it's the same size bottle it's not like one's an edp and one's an edt one's not one's not a perfume and one's a eau de toilette they were both edts and they're both 50 mil so deb got it for me uh it came the other day i'll just uh, quickly show you oh yeah oh dear there it is jimmy Chu, man it's a really nice set, that. It's a lovely little sleeve, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, like I said, I'm not really a fragrance person, but this one's got a really nice scent. There it is, look. Jimmy Choo, man. And that, for the box set, like I said, was 30. But if I wanted the fragrance on its own, it was 46. So it was a bit of a no-brainer, really, wasn't it? Strange how these sales work sometimes, I'm sure of it. <clears throat> Uh, another thing I noticed um, last night, I saw the football score. Now, I don't hold to these teams that are superior by a mile, thinking they're good because they've hammered a low team. Now, if you're playing, say, in the Champions League, 
and you've got two teams that are on equal merits because they both qualified for the Champions League. Fantastic, great job done. You know, if somebody wins 4 0, 5 0, you don't mind that. I think that though Man City won last night and they won 9 0, I think they were basically rubbing Burton's nose in it. And I thought they were very disrespectful of them. I really did because they know that they could have stopped at 5 0. They could have just passed it round or, you know, just, I don't know, just enjoyed the game a bit more. But instead, they humiliated a team. Now, you might say, yeah, but if that was Liverpool, you wouldn't be bothered. I would be bothered because I remember when Liverpool did something very, very similar in 2001 when they beat Stoke 8-0 in a uh, cup game. And I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed by it because there's no need for a team to win 8-0. You know, if you're 4 or 5 nil up, you don't need to think, oh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll score as many as we can just to make the other team look crap. And that's basically what Man City have done. You know, there's 90 minutes left. And I think they're trying to get a world record or something and beat them by about 16 or 17 nil. Just so they can look really, really good on top of the tree. Well, everybody knows that they're a mile superior to Burton. You could probably buy Burton Albion with one of their players' wages. You know, one of Man City's wages. And I, I just think it really, really does make me cringe. And I hate it. I hate it, these teams that know they are better than another team. And yes, OK, I know they've got to play well and they've got to get into the final, but you don't need to beat somebody 9-0 in the first leg. You don't need to do that. That's just humiliation, that is. You just basically, it's like a school bully. You're humiliating a team. You're like humiliating somebody in school. You're just doing it because you know you can do it. And I'm sorry, but I feel really strongly about that. People might say that, yeah, well, it's football, that's the game, blah, blah, blah. But I still don't like it. And it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove a thing. If Man City win 11-0 against Man Manchester United, I will be impressed. If they win 9-0, 6-0, 7-0 against the Premier League team, I will be impressed. But they beat Burton Albion. Burton Albion. Now, I'm sorry. To me, it means jack shit. It means nothing. And that's not sour grapes because at the end of the day, we're top of the league. Liverpool are by four points. So it's not like I'm thinking, oh, man, you know, they're going to catch us up and they're going to overtake us. We don't know yet. We'll have to see what happens. But... I do think that Manchester City have got a better winning mentality than Liverpool. And if now we've lost two in a row, both in the cup against Wolves, when we didn't put out the right team at all, and in uh, the league against Man City, then there is a chance we could crumble. You know, we could just literally collapse and they could overtake us and we could finish third or fourth. We don't know. But I think Burnley away on Saturday will be an important game. If we can get three points from that, I'll be happy. Um, even though Burnley are quite low, they've got more to play for because they're surviving. Whereas Liverpool are, you know, top of the league. So the pressure's all on Liverpool at the moment. I think it's harder when you're at the top because the pressure is on you. And you know that one slight cock up and a team behind you is going to catch you up. Simple as. I mean, Tottenham aren't out the uh, title race yet. They're still doing well. I think their one slip up, you know, at home to Wolves proves that Wolves can beat anybody on the day. You know, to beat, to beat Tottenham 3-1 at Spurs. And then to beat Liverpool, OK, fair enough, we didn't put out a strong team, but they still beat us. They still beat us. They still had the desire and the passion to beat us, which is good on them. Uh, I'm going to start uh, another box set in a bit. I don't know which one yet. I haven't made up my mind. I'll figure that one out in a bit, actually, because I'm, I'm a bit nonplussed. I don't know what I'm going to do for that. Um, I've got tons and tons, comedies, thrillers, all sorts, even stand-up comedy box sets. I've got Billy Connolly, uh, Lee Evans. I've got quite a load of different things like that. So I'm not sure yet. I'm still reading my book, Red Machine, which is a story of Liverpool footballers in the 80s. And it's really, really good. Um, I've already read about Bruce Grobelaar, uh, Howard Gale, Michael Robinson, uh, John Walk. John Walk. That's getting to be an interesting one, that is, actually. Um, and they all recount different stories of, of people. But the one thing that they always say is that the two most gentlemanly players there and the two which they had the most respect for was King Kenny, Kenny Dalglish, and Graeme Souness. Um, because Graeme Souness always came across as like a big hard man, because he had to. That was his job. You know, he didn't want anybody to think he was a soft touch. And he was, a, you know, a real tough tackling guy, really good player. But according to one of the footballers, you know, he kept, he kept referring to him as a big cuddly teddy bear. And I can't see Graeme Souness like that. I just can't. He's always looked like, you know, the kind of person who, if you give him lip, he'd sort of <laughs> knock you on the floor like that. You know? But, um, yeah, so I'm enjoying my books. I'm also doing a lot of music listening as well um, because I want to keep myself sort of cultured, if you like, because it's too easy to just go into a routine where you don't get no culture whatsoever. You just think all you've got to do is watch the news once a week, and that's culture. It isn't. 
So I like to keep up with my music, my reading, me watching television, my current affairs, because I always keep up with the news as well, as you've noticed. And um, basically, me, me everyday life, you know, going on the internet, doing stuff on Facebook. Um, I know a lot of people at the moment have got uh, colds and flus and stuff like that. I seem now, touch wood, well, to be getting over mine. Uh, my writing is coming back a bit now as well. Um, so, yeah, things things aren't doing too bad at the moment. Things are quite looking up. It's all good fun, isn't it? Anyway, you all take care. This is me saying goodbye on this th Thursday evening, and I will do another video tomorrow. Thank you for watching my daily vlog. I hope it was informative and interesting. If you like what I'm doing, then you can subscribe to my channel by clicking there. And if you want to see exactly what I was talking about yesterday, you can look up there. Bye for now.